Alright, hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about more proofs. In the last, hopefully, um, in the video before, we talked about part one of proofs. Induction and, um, uh, contradiction, yeah. So now we're going to be talking about proofs using the binomial theorem. Hopefully you know the binomial theorem from counting and probability. Um, the, the binomial theorem, um, or first, A, let's say that, um, M choose N, or this notation is kind of like, uh, uh, parentheses around M over N, but there's no fraction bar, and that's going to be equal to M factorial over N factorial times M minus N factorial where factorial represents um the like and that number so n uh, times that number minus one minus two all the way down to one so for example um three factorial is equal to three times two times one so you multiply all the natural numbers below it um so yeah now the binomial theorem states that a plus b to the x. Actually, we're going to be using, we're going to be expanding on the binomial theorem in a later video. If we had a plus b plus c to the x, and like um, a plus b plus c plus d, and so on, for more variables than just a and b. So this is equal to um, maybe if you knew, maybe if you know um, the sum notation, you can write it in sum notation, um, and that would be. Sigma from um, y equals zero to x of x choose y times x to the y or times x to the um, yeah y times y to the am I doing this right? Yeah, no, sorry, no, it's from x to the x minus y times y to the y. And we can also switch them because, um, yeah, but because, yeah. So now, we're going to be using the binomial theorem to prove some things. Um, binomial theorem is not usually the best way to go in proving, but sometimes when you have something like 65 to the, uh, and then you have that to, like, and yeah, you have 65, then you might feel like you can use a 64, and then you can also use a 1, and then you can split it up using binomial theorem. Um, by that, I mean, if you had a problem, usually with binomial theorem is useful when you have to do remainders, and there's like 65, and then you can split it up into 64 plus 1. Uh, a type of problem like that would be find the remainder when 65 to the 20th is divided by 512. I got this from AOPS. Um, many book, many problems that I get and stuff like that is usually from AOPS, stuff like that. I uh, yeah, if I don't say it, it's probably from AOPS or some book, but yeah. So final remainder when six, 65 to the 20th is divided by 512. So I what I see is that 512 and 64 are powers of two, two, so we can split this up into 64 plus one to the 20th. Now, by binomial theorem, we're going to get that's equal to, I don't know what that line is, 20 choose 20 times 64. Um, I, I'm kind of like writing this in a different way, but yeah, 60, I'm kind of writing this thing. I'm kind of writing it like you can, yeah, so remember how I said you can switch these, right? So I'm writing it like this, but because uh, Pascal's identity says that x choose y is equal to x choose x minus y, we actually can see that here because there's m minus y and n and n, and x minus x minus y is just um, y. So then, um, yeah, so you can switch, like um, 20 choose 3 is the same as 20 choose 17. So if I do like this, I can switch them kind of, and I'm writing it as 20 choose 20 for it rather than 20 choose 0 because they're, because they're the same thing. Um, so now I'm going to write it like this, and I get 
22 is 19. Times 64 to the 19th times 1. Um, plus dot 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 plus 22 is 2 times 64 squared times 1. So, no one says it's 1. 1 to any power is 1. So, I'm just, just, just 64. Um, that's really there. And then plus 22 is 1. I'm 64. Plus 22 is 0. Um, times 1. So, yeah, um, now, we notice that 64 is 2 to the 6th. And then we know 64 squared is equal to uh, 2 to the 6th squared, which is equal to <clears throat> 2 to the 12th. Um, um, <clears throat> yeah, so, we see that everything in this is, um, is divisible by 2 to the 9th, right, because of this fact, um, <clears throat> everything is divisible in 2 to the 9th, um, except for these last two terms. Um, yeah, so that, <clears throat> so that means that when we divide, um, and so we also notice that five to 512 is equal to 2 to the 9th. That's why we're using 2 to the 9th. So, um, I don't think I explained that clearly. So, 64 to the 20th is 2 to the, um, 6th to the 20th. So, uh, and then all of them are 60, and then 64 is 2 to the 6, 2 to the 6, blah, blah, blah. And then, um, yeah, so that means that only the last two terms are not divisible. So this is equal to the remainder when this is, is divisible, or the remainder of this divided by 512. So, um, that would be, um, so 20 choose 1 is 20. And then we have times 64 plus 7, uh, 20 to 0 is 1. So, yeah, okay. Then we um, add these, or yeah, then we get, um, this is going to be 1, 2, 8, 0, and plus 1 is going to be 1, 2, 8, 1. Okay. That divided by 12, we can just, oh. That divided by 12 can simply be computed. So, um, 512 times 2 is 1024, so the remainder is going to end up to be 260, no, 257, so that's our answer, and this is where we can use binomial theorem. Um, So now I want you to try to um, do this using modular arithmetic from our number theory. Okay, now um, 65 to the 20th. Hopefully by now you're used to modular arithmetic. Um, so now we divide by 512. So we say, so um, a trick in uh, uh, modular arithmetic, if you didn't know it yet, is that you can, if you had like 2 to the 20th divided by 5, um, what you can do is this is that's equal to 2 to the 4th to the 5th divided by 5 and then that's equal to 16 to the 5 divided by 5 or right, we're looking for the um, remainder so do congruences and then that's going to be congruent to um, when we divide by 5 by the way at the end it's going to be a mod 5 right so now when we divide by 5 here um, we notice that 15 is a multiple of 5 so 16 is 1 plus that, so we have 1 to the 5th, and that's congruent to just 1. So the remainder when 2 to the 20th is, is divided by 5 is just 1. You can also um, do it many other ways, but uh, like you can take different chunks of these 2s, um, if you uh, like pretend you had it all written out, and then there's 20 of them. You can take chunks of them. They don't have to be a multiple of 20, that you can take like 
chunks of three. And then you get eight, and then um, you can take different chunks, and then when you multiply them, you get eight or 16, something like that. And then whichever one might what might be nice, like, has a remainder of, um, like, whichever one's nice, meaning, like, uh, it's one plus a multiple of five or one minus, uh, or, like, um, a multiple of five minus one, like that. You can use that, and then you get this. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, another way you can do it is, you notice that 64. So, you can look for anything with a unit digit of 4 or 1, because, um, or 6 or 9, right? Because multiples of 5 are in end in 0 or 5, and then, uh, look for a multiple of two, uh, or look for a power of 2 that ends in n uh, 9, uh, 1, 4, or six because those ones are gonna be either modulo one or negative one or not one it's not modulo they're gonna be um congruent to one or negative one to the some power like in this case this is um e this is congruent to negative one modulo five so if you had so this is two to the six so if you split this up you'd get um two to the six cubed right times two squared right like I said, there's going to be a multiple of two, uh, of 20, uh, like 6 isn't. And then that's going to be congruent to 2 to the 6 is 64. Right? And then 64 is negative 1. Uh, it is congruent to negative 1 and modulo 5. Right? So the, I'm just using, I'm just, uh, I just wanted to do this example with negative 1 and then cubed times and then uh, 4. This is 4, right? 4 modulo 5 is negative 1, again. They don't always have to be positive, you can have them negative, right? And then, um, this gets you negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, and you get the same answer. Yeah, so, um, these types of problems are, um, yeah, useful when it comes to, like, um, yeah, so you can use binomial theorem, modular arithmetic. Sometimes it's better to use binomial theorem, sometimes it's not. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I don't think I did the example, but, so 65 to the 20th divided by 512 is going to be equal to, um, <clears throat> in this case, it's a lot harder with modular arithmetic. Um, and, and with binomial theorem, I know it seems like there's more work, there's a lot to write out, but in the end, you notice that all these cancel out in the modular arithmetic when you do modulo um, 512, right? Yeah, and then, yeah. So, yeah, um, thanks for watching, and uh, see you guys next time. Goodbye.